All right, so welcome to another experiment, this time some more calorimetry, uh, but this time we'll focus on some chemical reactions. I've got here two graduated cylinders. They are each filled with 100.0 milliliters of solution. We have two molar hydrochloric acid, 2.0 molarity, and over here another 100.0 milliliters, but this time 2.0 molar sodium hydroxide, NaOH. This is a strong acid, this is a strong base, and we're gonna react them together in our coffee cup calorimeter. Now in the coffee cup calorimeter, I've got a magnet. I'm gonna be putting that magnet in there, put it on a magnetic stirrer, we'll turn that on, it'll keep things mixed as they react. Now I've got a vernier um, temperature sensor displayed over here as the temperature. Let's see what the initial temperature of these solutions are. We'll just measure the initial temperature of the sodium hydroxide. We'll assume that the temperature of the hydrochloric acid is the same. Both solutions have been made about two or three days ago and they've been sitting at room temperature. So there you can see the initial temperature of the solutions. All right, I'm gonna put the thermometer through a hole in our styrofoam lid that fits snugly into our styrofoam cup. Now let me pour one of the two solutions, the sodium hydroxide, into the calorimeter, the coffee cup calorimeter. There we go. And I'll turn on the magnetic stirrer. So the little magnet inside is now spinning and it's keeping everything well mixed. So what we'll do next, we'll quickly pour in the strong acid, we'll put the lid on, and we'll observe the temperature change. So here we go, pour in the acid, put the lid on, and you wanna observe for yourself the change in temperature as the strong acid and the strong base neutralize each other. And it seems to have reached pretty much a maximum temperature. So the reaction is done and there's your final temperature after mixing those two solutions. Let's pause and reset. All right, in this next trial, we're gonna take um, a strong acid. We have 100 milliliters of 2.0 molar hydrochloric acid, and we're gonna mix it with a weak base. We have two, 100 milliliters of 2.0 molar ammonia or ammonium hydroxide, some people would refer to it as. Let me take the ammonia solution. We'll pour that into our calorimeter. Calorimeter has the little magnetic stir bar in it. We'll take our hydrochloric acid and we'll record its initial temperature and we'll use this initial temperature as the initial temperature of both solutions. So you can see on the computer interface there, the initial temperature of the hydrochloric acid. All right, we'll turn on the magnetic stirrer. I can smell the ammonia as a very distinct odor and two molar ammonia is a pretty concentrated solution. Let's add the strong acid to the weak base and we'll record the temperature change. Add that, add that spill a drop or two. Small source of error. All right, so you can see the reaction there has reached completion. The system is at the thermal equilibrium. There's your final highest temperature reached. All right, so let's reset. All right, so for our third trial, we're going to go back to our strong base. We have 100 milliliters again, this time 2.0 molar sodium hydroxide, and we'll neutralize it with 100 milliliters again of this time 2.0 molar 
acetic acid or ethanoic acid, which of course is found in vinegar, and it's a weak acid. So here we're doing strong base with a weak acid. Let's pour the base into the calorimeter. Turn on our little magnetic stirrer inside. There we go. Now, this time let's record the initial temperature using the acid. Okay, so I've got my temperature sensor sitting in the acid. You can see what the reading is on the computer. There's your initial temperature. Let's take that out. Put the thermometer to the lid. Okay, we'll mix the acid with the base and we'll see the temperature change. Lid on. Cable out of your way. You can now see the temperature is rising dramatically. It seems to have plateaued. There's the final temperature reacting the strong base with the weak acid. Let's reset. All right, and for our last trial today, we're gonna to take a weak acid, 2.0 molar acetic acid, and we'll mix it with the weak base, 2.0 molar ammonia. We again have 100 milliliters of each solution that we're gonna to mix together. So I'll pour in the ammonia first to our calorimeter. You can smell the ammonia solution. And then the acetic acid solution, of course, also has a pronounced odor. It smells like vinegar. Let's put the temperature sensor into the acetic acid solution. You can record for yourself the starting temperature of our solutions. All right, so now let's mix the two. I'll turn on the magnetic stirrer. And here we go, pour in the acid. And immediately put the lid on. And you can see for yourself the temperature change that's occurring. in this weak acid with a weak base combination. All right, so it seems to have reached its final temperature, the highest temperature it's gonna to get to. So record that as your final temperature. You should now have enough data to calculate the molar heats of neutralization, the molar enthalpy of neutralization for each of the four acid-base neutralization reactions that we've seen here today. All right, for this next trial, we're gonna take a look at the heat of dissolution for an ionic compound as it dissolves in some water. We're gonna be using, as our ionic compound, ammonium persulfate first. You can see there the name and its chemical formula. You can also look up the formula if you'd like, ammonium persulfate. So we're gonna take our calorimeter with our little magnetic stirrer inside. We'll put that on the balance and zero it. And now let's add some water. You'll wanna record the mass of water that we're putting in the calorimeter. Okay, just under 80 grams. We'll put that on the magnetic stirrer. Now let's take a weighing boat with the ammonium persulfate salt. Now the, the weighing boat, let's put another one actually on the balance and we'll zero it. And now we'll add some ammonium persulfate to the balance. And you can record the amount that we're gonna put in our calorimeter. 
Okay, so just over 40 grams. Now let's add the ammonium persulfate. Now I've checked the solubility of the salt. It should all dissolve in that water. So we'll add the, oops, I guess we should record the initial temperature of the water. We're moving too fast. So let's get our temperature sensor in the water bath. And you can see what the initial temperature of the water is. All right, now let's add our salt. As I'm doing this pretty quickly, you may note some, some things going, hey, that's not the best way to do that, or I would have done something a bit different. You can think about different possible sources of error in this experiment. So let's add the salt, get our lid on the calorimeter, and you can record for yourself the final temperature inside the calorimeter. We'll get spinning a little bit faster. I don't want it to splash things up on the sides of the calorimeter, but we do want it to dissolve the salt. So you can see here right away something a bit different from the um, reactions between acids and bases. When we were doing acid-base neutralization reactions, the temperature rose when we mixed the acid and base. Here, when I dissolved the ammonium persulfate in the water, we see a, a quick and dramatic drop in temperature. So you can you think of the words exothermic and endothermic, and you can quickly apply one of them to each of those processes. Neutralization reactions, are they exothermic or are they endothermic? The dissolving of ammonium persulfate, is it exothermic or is it endothermic? All right, so I think we've reached an equilibrium there. That last decimal's fluctuating a little bit, but I think you could record for yourself the final temperature inside the calorimeter, and we'll move on to try one more ionic compound. All right, for our final trial today, we're gonna to do one more ionic solute um, and measure its heat of dissolution as it dissolves in some water. So let's zero the electronic balance with our calorimeter on top. There's a little magnetic stirrer in there. We'll add some distilled water. You can record for yourself the mass of water that we're using here. It's a little bit more than 70 grams. Put that on the magnetic stirrer. This time we're going to use as our ionic solute potassium hydroxide. Okay, potassium hydroxide is a strong base, but like all strong bases, it's an ionic compound. It's got an alkali metal at the beginning, potassium hydroxide, so it should be quite soluble in water. Let's zero a balance again with a weighing boat. The potassium hydroxide comes in a form of pellets, rather large pellets, so it may take a little bit longer to dissolve in the water. We'll notice that if it takes longer for it to reach equilibrium. So there's the mass of the potassium hydroxide we're using. Okay, just over 20 grams. 21 grams, actually. Let's record the initial temperature of our water in the calorimeter. You can see on the computer interface, the initial temperature of the water in the calorimeter. All right, so we'll get it spinning. All right, and now we'll add our potassium hydroxide. You may have noticed a little drop of water splashed out as I poured that in. There's a small source of error. And you can hear, in the video, you can probably hear the sound of the pellets as they hit the 
temperature sensor. Now you can tell right away that the temperature this time is not dropping, it's rising. So different ionic solutes, when they dissolve in water, sometimes that process is endothermic and sometimes it is exothermic. In this case, we get a very large jump in temperature. It's gotten quite hot inside that calorimeter. All right, so it's reached its sort of an equilibrium there. I think the temperature stopped changing. So the potassium, I don't hear any more of that clicking sound. So the potassium hydroxide should be fully dissolved and you can record the final temperatures. So using the information for the two salts, the ammonium persulfate and the potassium hydroxide, you should be able to calculate the molar enthalpy of dissolution, the molar heat of dissolution um, for those two compounds.